was at that time, and I don't know how many million people who learned at that time. But anyway, it said Noah was 600 years old when he when the flood began, and they had a short time. They had a, a lot of time to build the ark, but when it come time to go on the ark, God told Noah, "It says seven days the flood's going to come." So time is running out for those that were left behind, left the, uh, behind the, uh, the flood. And folks, I believe today that time's running out. I believe that all the signs that the Lord Jesus Christ told us about that was going to happen prior to the coming of the Lord, uh, we can see them every day. Not just every now and then, but every day we see them happening around us. So I do believe for this old world that time's are running out. And I really do. And if you have your Bibles now to turn to what we're going to read from, turn to uh, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 7, and we're going to begin reading up there in verse number 16. And they that went in, that is in the ark, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut them in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly above the uh, upon the earth and all hills that were under the whole heaven, whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered. Now, I've kind of done some research on that, like Herb said he did. And, that come, and then, you know, the water uh, covered all the mountains, right? Well, it was 22 and a half feet above the, the tallest mountain on earth. And if it's 22 and a half feet above the tallest mountain on earth, how deep do you think it was down in the valley? Deep, wouldn't it? And anyway, it's 15 cubits upward. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, and of every creeping, creeping thing that crept, creepeth upon the earth and every man, and whose nostril was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died. And every substance was destroyed, which is upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Now you think about that, church, uh, how, how, how deep the flood was. The flood was, we know, 40 days and 40 nights it rained. And the Bible said here that the water prevailed 150 days. But all totaled up, you get to read the rest of it, and we'll get through that after uh, uh, some other time. But Noah and his family were in that ark 371 days all total. They were in that ark 371 days all total. Now, can you imagine for just a minute, being in that ark 371 days, eight people was in there, and all those animals were in there. Birds and elephants and snakes and spiders and everything else was in there. And, and, by, and a, lot of, a lot of the criticism on this has been said that the flood was just local. It wasn't universal. But the Bible said here on all the earth, my friend, this morning, all the earth. So that means today that the entire world at one time was covered with a flood today, a flood water. And folks, today, listen, it was a universal flood. And brother and sister this morning, it's a universal salvation. And as Noah and his family went into that ark, the Bible tells us about Noah uh, 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 building the ark. The Bible said he he uh, done it for 120 years. But friend, let me tell you something. You get to thinking back about Noah, and the Bible tells us, friend, that as he was building the ark, Church today, I believe that he, they they made fun of him. But folks today, don't you imagine one thing? Glory to God today that Noah had to live a godly life in front of his wife and his children. Because, friend, today, uh, God didn't just tell Noah to go in by himself. Uh, the Bible said, Noah, uh, you go in and you take your family in there too. Uh, so, friend, today, he had an influence upon his 
family, didn't he? And he built the ark just the same way that God told him to. The Bible says he sealed it in within and without with pitch. And that was a tar-like subject. Church, the Bible tells me that me and you, and now that we're saved by the grace of God, we're sealed until the day of redemption. And friend, today you get to thinking about it. Noah went in that ark, brother, today. And the Bible said there that God shut him in. And friend, the Bible tells us today that when God shuts, no man can open. And when God opens, no man can shut. Friend, listen. You imagine it today, brother, today. Herbie said last Sunday about uh, watching a movie about it. Somebody sneaked on board. But can you imagine as that flood began to rise and the water began to rise and that the ark began to rise? Don't you imagine, brother, all those people uh, that have made fun of Noah, uh, Martin, Mount Noah and all like that. I imagine Herbie, they was hanging on to the side of that ark, don't you? And brother, today they were trying to get in, no doubt. Uh, friend, today uh, they were probably banging on the ark and everything else. They were screaming and hollering. But friend, God has shut the door and nobody could get in. Well, what were the requirements to get inside that ark? The Bible tells me that that Noah looked there. God looked down and found, brother, Noah grace in the eyes of the Lord. That ain't all he said. He said, I've seen thee that ye are the righteous man. Not meaning that he was perfect today, but meaning church today that he was a saved man. And his righteousness was like all the rest. It was, brother, today uh, uh, through Christ. And the only one that could get in that ark. You'd think maybe of that during that time. I don't, like I said, I don't know what the population of the earth was. But for any of you think during that time that there would have been some good people there, wouldn't you? And I imagine there was. There had some good old boys there. I mean, they probably done the best they could. They probably helped other people out and all like that, but they didn't go in the ark. No matter how good they was, they didn't go in because, you see, the requirement was that they would be righteous as Noah was before God. Not before man, not before the pastor, not before the teachers or deacons, but before God. And when God looked down, he not only found grace, no, not only found grace, but when God looked down, church, this morning, he said, I've seen thou righteous. And friend, today, God looks down, and church, this morning, he sees every heart, every mind, and every thought. And friend, today, Hey, this flood, my folk friend, was a flood of a, a proportion that they'd never seen before. It also tells me today, friendly son, as them animals begin to come into the ark, as Riley was said last Sunday, them, them animals, Noah didn't have to go out and round them up somewhere or another. They came to the ark. And friend, today, that's the same thing, friend, today that God says, come to me. I mean, friend, listen, when Noah went into the ark, God was already in there. And God said to Noah, come thou and thy family. That's the first time in the Bible that the word come is used. And friend, today is still the same way. He tells us over the book of Matthew, oh, ye that are left. Uh, our labor and heavy laden come unto me and find rest. He still says today, come unto me and find rest. Uh, friend, today uh, it's good today when our bodies get tired uh, to sit down and rest a while. Praise God today, Wallace, one day after a while, I'm uh, going to heaven and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to rest a while. The labors and troubles will all be over. And friend, listen, as they was in that ark there, and inside the ark, I want you to notice something else today. What do you think went on inside that ark? Well, the Bible doesn't give us a whole lot of details about what uh, what did go on in there, though. Uh, but, Frank, can you imagine been in there uh, 371 days? I'll tell you something today. I believe God would have us to uh, think on this. Church, this morning, 
when you get saved, your work ain't done. No, and his family was in the ark, brother, but their work wasn't done. <coughs> and friend, today, when God saves us, that's not the, that's not the end. There's work to be done. And Noah and his family, no doubt they had to feed them uh, uh, animals there and everything like that. And don't you know today uh, that the men had uh, done some of it, and I believe the women had done some of it too. They shared the burden inside there. Uh, they shared the work inside there. And friend, today when we knew get saved, uh, glory to God today, the work's just begun. Because, friend, there's no unemployment line in God's work. Uh, brother, there's no shortage in God's work. Uh, Jesus told him one time over in the book of Matthew, he said, look up out on the harvest. Uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Uh, glory to God today, church. Listen, uh, time grew short for Noah and his family. It's a joy short for me and you today. If we're going to work for the Lord today, we better be about it. Whenever Jesus was 12 years old, yonder in the temple for him today, and his parents missed him, and they finally found him, he said, didn't you know I was doing my father's work? And hallelujah to God today. Listen. We need to be about the Father's work. I mean, folks, just because we're saved, that don't mean we're to sit down and do nothing. God's got a work for us to do. Uh, God's got a job for each and every person in this church this morning, uh, or whatever that job may be. I imagine friend inside the ark there uh, that Noah designated the work out. Uh, Ham, Sham, and Ephraim have done this, and their wives done that. And I imagine friend today, and knowing Noah, a brother today, I believe, praise God, there's a whole lot of praying going on. I mean, they were in that ark. Think about it. I mean, friend, and the only window they had was in the top of it. They couldn't see the flood out there. They had to look up today. Praise God today. That symbolizes the fact, folks, this morning, we're to get our eyes off the world, off the circumstances that are surrounding us, and look up to God because that's where they're all <coughs> coming from. It was coming from God. And that also tells me something else today about the, the, the about during the flood. It shows me that God's still in control. I mean, friend, today the turmoil and everything that's going on, uh, God is still in control today. And let me tell you something else, church, this morning. Uh, he controls the uh, animals and the waters and everything else. Uh, but I want you to notice something else this morning. The Bible said God shut them in, right? Uh, brother, don't you know that when that flood begin to rise and that ark begin to float on the waters, uh, that there was many, many people out there. I don't know how many. It might have been thousands of them for all I know. I would try it won't end, but they couldn't get in. But I want you to notice something else. Uh, them that was then couldn't get out either. God shut them in. That tells me, friend, today that if you're saved by the grace of God, you're saved. That's it, amen. You can't unsave it or unsave it at all. When God saves, he saves to the uttermost is what he said there. And friend, today, I did a little more research on this and I found out that it had this, this ship had 95,000 square feet of deck space on it, amen. I mean, boy, listen today. God, you remember this, I mean, there'd been a movie made about that, that Titanic, remember? Remember when that Titanic went on the first voyage? They said it couldn't sink, didn't they? God had other plans. God sunk it with an iceberg. But brother, today, let me tell you something. The only un unsinkable ship that's ever been built was the ark. It was the only one, because God, you couldn't sink it. Why? Because God was in there. And let me tell you something today. If you're in the ark today, you're safe, amen, from all the troubles and trials. Listen, he had, Noah had a work to do. And then as we look at this, folks today, notice something else about that ark today. Brother, listen, God didn't need a fleet of ships or anything to destroy the earth, that is. But brother, today, 
that, that, that ship or that boat or that ark, whichever one you want to call it, it didn't have a motor on it that propelled it along. It didn't have a rudder on it to guide it neither. Didn't even have any sails to go along. Who was the guiding that God was? Who was the power that God was? Because you see, friend, listen. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> because God said to Noah, you and your family come in. Now think about that church today. Well, times are drawing short. Have you got your family in? Have you got your family in today? Oh, friend, today Noah and his whole family went inside the ark. And they were just as safe as they could be. Amen. Because why? God was in there with them. For God told them to come in. He didn't say go in. He said come in. And friend, listen today. Uh, that ship was about, I think, it's 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. And friend, today, don't you imagine, friend, that all that time, there was a lot of uh, cleaning to do in there. I mean, the mountains was in there. And brother, there's a lot of cleaning to do in there. Friend, today that tells me this morning, God, when we are in the ark, are inside the ark with the Lord Jesus Christ, we still got some cleaning to do. There still things comes up in our lives uh, that ain't right with God that we need to let clean out. Uh, I'm sure we're sealed. Uh, can't get lost again. But boys, we sure can backslide. And brother, today, that's when Jesus says, come on in. Come on in. He told us, listen. He said, you're weak and heavy laden. Come on in. Ye that need rest, come on in. He said, whosoever will, let him come unto me. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. That's all a person has to do is say, Lord, save me. And that's it. Lord, save me. And then, folks, today I want you to notice also, the requirements, as I said, was to uh, uh, be a righteous man. But listen, the invitation that he got to come inside the ark, it was a divine invitation. It was an invitation from God Almighty. And that invitation still goes out today for people to come to him. But just like those that were in the, outside the ark that day, many today are making fun of it. Many today have said, Oh, <clears throat> I've heard all my life that Jesus is coming and he ain't come yet. That's the way it was in the days of Noah. Noah told him and told him for 120 years he preached. The floods are coming. The floods are coming. God's wrath on coming. <coughs> God's judgments are coming. And they all just shook their heads and laughed at old Noah, mocked him for it. Oh, but him and his family, they were building on that ark all that time. In other words, church today, don't you imagine, during the time that they was building on that ark, they was waiting for the rain to come. They was building the ark, and they was getting made fun of and everything else. Don't you imagine they kind of got discouraged? But what did Noah do? The old sad goat, he just kept on hammering. He just kept on hammering. And you know what? He didn't build that boat overnight. He didn't build it in a week. But brother, today, it started coming together piece by piece by piece. And that's the way, friend, today it is with our lives. Everything that happens in our lives is just a piece of the li our lives. They're coming together for the glory of the, Lo uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because church this morning, it was, a, 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 like I said, a wonderful ship, a wonderful boat, wonderful ark. But folks, today, let me tell you something. The description of it doesn't fit with all the pictures you see. You see, the pictures picture it as art. But the way it's built is more like a barge than it was an art. But all oh, think about it. It was a floating on the waves. Remember that story and that song we sang sometime about Jesus who come walking on the water? Well, friend, today, they were inside the ark, so to speak. They were walking on the water because every step they made, it was, uh, the ship was still on the water until the day they come out of it. I mean, friend, listen, uh, before the flood, like we said last week, Noah was busy 
of building the ark and trying to get people saved. But then, friend, when the ark was built and Noah and his family were safe inside, then the rains came. God, the Bible said, not only the rains come, but the fountains of the deep opened up. I mean, all the underground water, so to speak, was well, just started spewing up out of the ground. And this whole world was, was filled with the flood, filled with the water. I mean, I, the critics say, oh, that wouldn't what, what happened. It's just a local flood. Well, friend, today the Bible said to hear the whole earth, didn't it? And the Bible said every living creature, didn't it? And I believe that. I don't believe there was a living creature left outside that ark because they all died. Brother, but what gets me is how many thousands you think there was that died without God, died without the Lord. Just think about it today, church. How many are dying without God? But Noah got his family in. Uh, that says a whole <coughs> lot to me about what kind of a family, what kind of a father Noah was. Because you see, church, this morning, in the day and age that we live in, the devil is after these kids. He's after them. He'll get them if we ain't careful. Even if they get saved, he's still after them, but they can't get lost again. But is your family in the ark? Is your family in the ark today? That would be my question to you. And that's the short message for today. Next week, though, I'm excited about it. Next week is what happens after the flood. And I hope everybody can come because we're going to try to bring out the significance of most of all of that rainbow that God put in the clouds. I mean, how I many colors are there in the rainbow, right? I know you got the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, violet. How many colors are there? Seven. Yeah, seven. Well, we're going to, uh, next week we're going to find out what that seven means and also what five means. Well, there's seven we can see, but the ultraviolet and, uh, That's it. and uh, infrared, so they, can't, we can't, can't see, see them. Can't uh, see all seven, these can, but we can't. <laughs> but anyway, I want to send your mic one while we stand. There's somebody here this morning. That feels the need to come to the altar, would you come? Ask you the question today. First and foremost, are you in the ark? Are you there? Do you know that you're safe within the arms of the Lord? You know that you've been saved, and you know that you're heaven bound. You know that you've been washed in the blood. If you don't know that, we invite you to come this morning. We invite you to come. Then we ask you this morning, is your family in the ark? If not, would you not like to come pray for them today? Or maybe they're in the ark and having a rough time. Well, what's your place? Yeah, just as you are. That's the way God wants you.
anybody got anything on their heart they want to say, 